Do you have teamwork in your teams? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. How do six people climb a 10-foot wall without the help of a ladder and all cross to the other side successfully? Well, let's look at this video. In today's first reading, we are shown five men in the first Christian community praying and fasting. We know Saul, as Paul was still called then, being a new convert, and Barnabas, who was extensively covered in yesterday's vlog. But we do not know Simeon the nigger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaean, a friend of Herod the Tetrarch. They were probably also preachers, teachers, and prophets in their own right. Notice the sequence of their being named in the passage. Usually, the most important is named first. Barnabas was well known. Saul was the last to be named. He was probably still on probation. They were praying and fasting so that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit in their ministry. They were also praying for their own needs and trusted that the Lord will hear them. For didn't Jesus say, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. They needed to fast in order for their prayers to have meaning. What do I mean by this? They had to empty themselves so that they will be able to receive God's message fully. I remember the story of three men who were hiking one day and unexpectedly came upon a large, raging, violent river. They needed to get to the other side but had no idea of how to do so. The first man prayed to God saying, Please God, give me the strength to cross this river. Poof! God gave him big arms and strong legs and he was able to swim across the river in about two hours after almost drowning a couple of times. Seeing this, the second man prayed to God, saying, Please God, give me the strength and the tools to cross this river. Poof! God gave him a rowboat and he was able to row across the river in about an hour, after almost capsizing the boat a couple of times. The third man had seen how this worked out for the other two, so he also prayed to God, saying, Please God, give me the strength and the tools and the intelligence to cross this river. And poof, God turned him into a woman. She stopped someone and asked for directions and was told that just a couple of hundred yards upstream was a bridge. We reflect today on the importance of unity and teamwork in our day-to-day -day situations where we need to relate with people around us, particularly in the work of God. We may have all the talented people around us to achieve our goals, but talent alone will not suffice. Someone once said that talent can win you a game, but teamwork can win you championships. Someone must lead the team and others must be helpful followers. Everyone has an opinion and everyone must be heard. But at the end of the day, when there is disagreement, someone must make the decision on which path to take. We can take a slice from the Jesuits, Benedictines, Salesians, and all the great religious congregations that practice this. When there is an issue, they all discuss. When there is no consensus, they let their top leader make the decision and everyone supports the decision 100%. No one goes on a blame game when the decision is rendered wrong later. No one ventilates outside the group his misgivings on the decision. They are all in this together, 100%. Contribute to the teamwork by elevating your enthusiasm and energy in any undertaking. A team is only as strong as its weakest link. Perseverance, grit, persistence, effort will not go unrewarded. But when you yourself slacken, you become the weakest link. Respect each one's role. There is no major or minor role. Everyone is important to the success of a goal. Trust them and be confident that each one will do his best to contribute. Sometimes we see weakness in one or the other, and this is common in teams. We have our own strengths and charisms. We must help one another, fill in the gaps, your strength complementing the weakness of the other. No one has a monopoly of talent in a team. Back your teammates when they are in a bind. Defend them when they are being hammered by people or circumstances. Do not abandon them, but make sure that everyone is tightly bound and committed to the mission. Your role is to watch the back of your teammate. You cannot lay the blame on them because you are also part of the blame. Be willing to correct someone who is out of line in a brotherly way, and be willing to admit and accept a mistake, to own it, and to strive to become better. Pride should not get in the way of fulfilling your mission together. The more humble you are, the more you will be exalted by God. 
challenge them to be the best they can be. There can be some competition within the team. This is normal to bring out their A-game, but with the challenge comes the fellowship, the bonding, the constant togetherness, the emphasis on the team and not on the individual, so that no one goes on his own to hurt the team. Finally, pray. Pray together. Fast together. Know that everything can only be achieved if such are in consonance with the will of the Father. Listen to His voice in your prayer time. Be aware that He works for the good of those who love Him, who are called to His purpose. For as long as you pray together, work as a team together, there can be no disappointments. For every circumstance is a moment of triumph. Maybe not now, maybe not evident yet, but when everything has come to pass, your obedience to His will shall be rewarded. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, make me become a valuable member of my team, not because of my talent alone, but because I share with them a boundless love for you and a willingness to follow your holy will. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.